This is Story Recapped. Today, I'm going to explain an action, horror, and sci-fi film called Resident Evil. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The Umbrella Corporation is the world's leader in technology, medicinal products, and healthcare. Unbeknownst to the public and some of its employees, the corporation also works on military technology, genetic experiments, and viral weaponry. One day, a mysterious person takes several blue and green vials into a briefcase. He tosses a blue vial across the laboratory room before exiting the area. The toxins from the broken vial enter the nearby air vent, spreading it around the building. The building's AI security system spots the broken vial and identifies it as containing the T-virus. Three scientists enter the laboratory just before the system blares the alarm. The employees casually leave, thinking it's a fire drill. But the doors are sealed shut, and the sprinkler system suddenly activates in the laboratory. An elevator stops but doesn't let the people out. Suddenly, the lights go out in the elevator, and the emergency phone line is dead. The scientists are stuck in the flooding laboratory as the system ignores their pleas. The people in the elevator hear the one next to theirs drop and crash. Seconds later, their elevator goes into freefall until the brakes stop their fall. The system releases halon gas into the hallway, suffocating the employees inside. The employees in the elevator force the door open and see their co-workers dead outside. With the doors stuck, one woman volunteers to squeeze through the small space, but the AI detects her attempt. It overrides the elevator's brakes, so they try to pull the woman back inside, but she's stuck. The elevator drops down, but it stops just before she hits the floor. However, the system forcefully lifts the elevator, decapitating the woman. Alice wakes up on her bathroom floor. She steps outside and finds a red dress laid out on the bed. On a desk nearby is a note saying, Today, all your dreams come true. She then inspects the dresser, finding one full of weapons. Alice explores the mansion and finds her wedding photo. She takes a peek outside, but is suddenly grabbed by a man who drags her back inside. Soldiers break into the mansion and tackle the man. The man declares that he's a cop, but they ignore him. One soldier orders Alice to report, but she gets confused. Another soldier reads the mansion's security system and reports that the primary defenses were recently activated, so Alice still suffers from its side effects. They find the cop's badge and learn that his name is Matt Addison. The leader, Shade, offers his team to take Alice and Matt into the hive, so Rain cuffs the cop and brings him in. They enter a door hidden behind a mirror and reach an underground train platform. Kaplan sets up a timer to 2 hours and 48 minutes before checking the train. With the power down, Rain climbs below to plug it back. She hears a noise from a broken vent nearby, then gets startled by a fellow soldier, JD. Soon, Kaplan starts the train and everyone gets on board. When JD opens the back door, an unconscious man suddenly falls from outside. Alice recognizes the unconscious man as her groom in her wedding photo, Spence. The team's medic, Olga, checks the man as he regains consciousness. When she asks his name, however, he doesn't remember. Olga reports that he's suffering memory loss like Alice. The train reaches its destination, and the soldiers immediately inspect the area. The AI system recognizes the soldiers as they get inside. Alice demands to know what's happening, so Shade explains that she, Spence, and the team work for the Umbrella Corporation. Alice and Spence are the security operatives that protect the entrance to the Hive, which is hidden in their mansion. Their marriage was part of their cover. The Hive is Umbrella Corporation's secret research facility, built underneath Raccoon City. Due to an incident, nerve gas was released into the house as part of its security defense. The gas knocked them unconscious and induced memory loss. The group enters the Hive, and Kaplan reports that the building's AI, the Red Queen, has already detected them. When they reach the flooded laboratories, Shade explains that the Red Queen killed everyone in the building for unknown reasons. His team was dispatched to shut down the AI. Matt gets startled by the body of one of the scientists through the glass door. Seeing her bothered, Spence gives his jacket to Alice. This triggers her memory of them in bed. With the area flooded, the team searches for another way to the Red Queen's chamber. When they leave, the scientist's body wakes up. The group heads to what the map identifies as Dining Room B, but instead sees a storage area filled with sealed tanks. Olga discovers that the Halon gas wasn't released in the area, so Shade orders everyone to search for survivors. Alice wanders on her own and finds a large creature inside one of the tanks. Later, they reach the control room near the chamber. Kaplan hacks into the system and opens the door. 
Shade heads inside and installs the transmitter on the chamber's door, allowing Kaplan to hack into it. Once it's open, the other soldiers bring in the equipment to shut the Red Queen down. As soon as the others are inside, the doors close. Kaplan struggles to hack it open as several defense systems are activated. Suddenly, a laser speeds towards the team inside, killing Olga and slicing another soldier's hand. The second laser kills another soldier while Shade holds on to the ceiling to avoid it. With Shade the only survivor, he prepares to evade the laser again, but it forms a grid that dices him just before Kaplan finally deactivates the system. The rest are frozen in shock. Kaplan musters up the courage to enter and proceed with the task. Alice joins him and helps him install the device. The Red Queen creates a hologram of a little girl to convince them to leave. She warns them that shutting her down will cause the building to lose its primary power, but Kaplan ignores her. Before he shuts her down, the Red Queen states that they will all die there. The building loses power momentarily, deactivating the system that keeps the tank stable and opening all sealed doors. Kaplan then removes the Red Queen's circuit board to prevent her from rebooting. On the storage floor, they hear something move in the distance, so Rain investigates. She follows the sound and finds a disoriented woman. Rain goes to help her, but the woman bites her hand and tackles her to the floor. The scuttle leads to Rain dropping her keys to Matt's cuffs. JD finds them and removes the woman from Rain. He orders the woman to stay down, but she doesn't listen even after getting shot multiple times. Frustrated, Rain fires more bullets into her, finally stopping the woman. JD is stunned that the woman remained standing after he shot her. Kaplan and the rest find them, and Rain explains the woman bit her. JD checks the woman's body, but it's gone. Matt notices the keys and sneakily picks them up. He points out that the woman's blood is coagulated, which would only happen after death. Kaplan announces that the rest are dead, but before Rain can react, they hear someone else moving. More people appear everywhere, bearing wounds that imply that they're dead. The zombies approach the group, and one attacks Rain. Rain snaps the woman's neck before firing at the rest, with the others following suit. The bullets, however, don't stop the zombies. Matt struggles to unlock his cuffs, but suddenly the tank behind him explodes, knocking him and Alice out. During this, Alice remembers promising an Umbrella Corporation employee to help her get the virus. The soldiers search for an exit while Matt crawls his way to the keys, accidentally dropping them into a drain. Kaplan and Spence find the exit, but struggle to unlock it with the code. Matt finally reaches the keys and unlocks his cuffs, but is caught between the zombies and a creature trying to escape from one of the tanks. Alice pulls him out of the way. Finally, JD unlocks the door, but it opens to a room full of zombies. The zombies pull him in and bite into his flesh. Rain jumps to save him, but she gets bitten until Kaplan pulls her away. Meanwhile, a hideous creature jumps out of one of the tanks. Alice and Matt search for the rest, but Matt soon disappears from her sight as well. Spence, Kaplan, and Rain retreat to the Red Queen's chamber. Kaplan deduces that the zombies are the Umbrella Corporation employees who were supposed to be dead. Rain points out that the zombies got out after they shut down the Red Queen and opened all the sealed doors. Alice stumbles upon the animal holding area where all the cages have been ripped open. A zombified dog runs to her, so she seals herself inside the connecting laboratory, where a zombified guard is hiding. After knocking down the zombie, Alice carefully reaches for the guard's gun, but the dog crashes into the window. She takes the gun and exits the laboratory, only to find more zombified dogs waiting for her outside. She shoots the dogs but runs out of bullets when the one in the laboratory appears. She kicks the dog in the head, killing it. Elsewhere, Matt arrives at the office area and searches a desk that belonged to an employee named Lisa. While looking through her files, a zombified Lisa approaches Matt. She attacks him until Alice slams a paperweight on her head. Alice recognizes Lisa as the employee she promised to help get the virus, but doesn't say it. Matt reveals that Lisa is his sister. He explains that he isn't a real cop, and is instead an activist like his sister, who hopes to expose Umbrella Corporation's illegal experiments. Lisa was meant to smuggle out the illegally developed T-virus, using the security codes that her contact gave her. Matt believes her contact betrayed Lisa, not knowing that her contact was Alice. Matt and Alice reach the control room. Spence suggests waiting for backup to arrive, but Rain reveals that the steel doors they entered from the mansion will be sealed within the hour to prevent possible contamination. With no way out, Alice decides to reboot the Red Queen, despite the other's protest. Before loading the Red Queen, she orders Kaplan to disable the circuit breakers, so in case the AI betrays them, they can remotely shut her down for good. The Red Queen reboots and mocks them. 
she explains that the T-virus was a medical breakthrough with profitable military applications. Since the human body remains active after death, the T-virus provides the necessary jolt to reanimate the body. However, the brain can only recall basic motor functions, with little memory and no intelligence, turning the subject predatory. The most effective way to kill the zombies is by destroying the brain or severing it from the spinal cord. The Red Queen recounts how the T-virus infected everyone in the building, so she exterminated the employees to prevent it from spreading outside the hive. She warns them that one bite will spread the virus. Thus, Rain is already infected. With the Red Queen's help, they find the utility tunnels to escape, but after walking for a while, zombies corner the group. Alice leads the team to the pipes overhead to escape, while she disables all zombies that come close. While climbing up, Kaplan gets bit in the leg. Rain stays below to fight the zombies and finds a zombified JD. Her shock allows JD to bite her before she can shoot back. The group traverses across the tunnels via the pipes, with the zombies following them underneath. Finally, they reach an exit, but the pipes suddenly collapse due to their weight, dropping Kaplan to the zombies. Kaplan fights the zombies off him, and Rain struggles to shoot, losing focus due to the infection. Alice takes her gun to save Kaplan, allowing him to climb into a pipe. She plots a way to rescue him, but Kaplan loses hope as he has only one bullet left. He orders them to go, much to Alice's regret. Once they're gone, Kaplan puts the gun in his mouth, but instead shoots the zombie crawling to him. He enters a vent to escape. Meanwhile, Alice and the rest reach the hallway to the laboratories. While making it across, Alice recalls how the T-virus had two formulas, blue for the virus and green for the antivirus. To cure Rain, Alice and Matt check the laboratories. Finally, she confesses that she was Lisa's contact, but she doesn't remember if she betrayed her. Alice checks the storage area and discovers that all the vials are gone. Suddenly, Spence's memory returns. He listened to Alice's conversation with Lisa and learned that Alice wanted to bring the corporation down. Spence wrote the note in their bedroom and stole the T-virus for Alice. He released the virus in the building and escaped before it was sealed. Alice realizes that he's the cause of everything. Spence grabs her gun and holds them at gunpoint. He offers to escape with Alice, promising her a luxurious life after selling the virus. Alice refuses to go with Spence, and he mocks her for knowing the experiments and allowing it to happen. Alice argues that she tried to stop the corporation, but he ridicules the idea. Spence reveals that the antivirus is on the train where he left it. A zombified scientist emerges from the water behind Spence, but no one warns him. He offers Alice to join him for the last time, and she refuses. The zombie finally bites Spence's neck, allowing Matt to tackle him. Still, Spence knocks him down and exits the laboratory, trapping the others inside. Suddenly, the Red Queen speaks to the others just as Spence reaches the train station. There, he retrieves his bag from the back and prepares to inject himself with the antiviral. Before he does, however, a large monstrous creature attacks and kills Spence, while the others watch from the surveillance monitor. The Red Queen explains that the creature is the result of injecting the T-virus directly into living tissue. Now that it has fed on fresh DNA, the creature mutates and becomes stronger and faster. Alice figures that the Red Queen hoped to lead them to the creature. The AI defends the antivirus may not work on her, since Rain has been infected for a long period. The Red Queen offers to let them out in exchange for killing Rain. Rain tosses an axe to Alice, urging her to kill her so they can escape. Suddenly, the monster finds them. The Red Queen warns them that the glass walls can't hold it off for long. Driven to the edge, Alice breaks the Red Queen's monitor instead. Suddenly, all the lights go out and the door opens. To their surprise, it's Kaplan. He fried the Red Queen's circuits to help them escape. They exit just as the monster breaks into the laboratory, then hurry to the train station. Kaplan starts the train while Alice collects the suitcase. Suddenly, Spence's body reanimates, so Alice decapitates him. Rain and Kaplan are injected with the antivirus as they ride the train back to the mansion. Minutes later, Rain passes out. Alice mourns for the woman, then picks up her gun in case she turns. However, Rain wakes up, revealing that she's not dead yet. Suddenly, the monster catches up to the train, clawing at the walls and scratching Matt. It tears the door apart and grabs Kaplan. Then it goes to the back door and knocks down Matt. Alice shoots the monster, but it hardly harms it. The monster wraps its tongue around her leg, so Matt drives a bag of metal pipes against it, releasing Alice. Alice stabs a pipe on its tongue to trap it in place, then instructs Matt to open the hatch. However, Rain turns into a zombie and attacks Matt. He shoots her in the head and her body hits the button that opens the hatch. The monster drops into the railway and burns due to the friction. Alice closes the hatch, severing its tongue. 
Matt and Alice arrive at the mansion just in time before the doors are sealed. Alice collapses in sorrow, so Matt comforts her, but his scratch suddenly becomes painful. Alice prepares the antivirus to cure him, but a team in hazard suits collects the two. Alice fights them off as they take Matt away. Two men see Matt mutating and decide to take him to the Nemesis program. Alice desperately tries to get Matt back, but she's eventually overwhelmed. Alice is then taken to a facility in Raccoon City. While she's unconscious, a new team is sent to the Hive to assess what happened there. When she wakes up, she's alone in an observation room. Alice painfully tears off the tubes connected to her body before banging on the one-way window. She then breaks out of the room but finds the building empty. Outside, Raccoon City is desolated after the zombies reach the area. She takes a shotgun from an abandoned police car in preparation for another battle. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.